you doing everybody this is the pop music freak I'm back with another video I'm uh, actually starting another series among all the series of different videos I'm doing on this channel this one is gonna be the top hits of each decade I'm gonna start out with the 1960s I'm gonna go through the top 100 songs of the decade and give you a little uh, story about each one let you know when it when it, exactly it was a hit and uh, whatever other information that's relevant without making this video take more than an hour. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go right into it. We got the 1960s. I have a list of the top 100 songs of the decade. Plus I always give the one that just missed. <laughs> so I'm gonna start right here at song number 101. It's the Shirelles and Will You Love Me Tomorrow and it was one of their first big hit records. Uh, first hit the charts in 1959. Nine or 58 actually very end of 58 didn't quite do too much hit the bottom of the chart they weren't really huge yet uh, but a couple of years later they decided to re-release the song and it really exploded went all the way to number one at the end of 1961 it was written of course by uh, the, the wonderful team of Carol King and Jerry Goffin and uh, we started them on a run of hits through the early 60s so that's 101 next Number 100, Question Mark and the Mysterians, 96 Tears, ended up one of, being one of the biggest hits of uh, late 1966. Um, it was really their only one major hit. They had a couple of minor hit singles after that, but the uh, 96 Tears was the hit, number 100 of the 60s. Next, number 99, John Fred and the Playboys with Judy in Disguise with Glasses. It was the number one hit early in 1968, spending two weeks at the top. Another act that really didn't have any other hits. So they're in the one hit wonder category as well, along with Question Mark and the Mysterians. All right, next, number 98, Ricky Nelson, Traveling Man, one of many hits he had. He was one of the biggest stars of the charts from 1957 through about 1962. Um, Ricky Nelson was later, later dropped the Y and was Rick Nelson. As he kind of made a comeback in the late 60s into the early 70s. Comeback only resulted in one more top 10 hit, which was Garden Party. Uh, sadly, he died in a plane crash in 1985. His two sons formed their own bands, Nelson, and they had a little bit of success in the early 90s. So that's Ricky Nelson, Traveling Man, um, 98 for the 60s. It might be worth noting that it had a pretty popular B-side, Hello, Mary Lou which charted in the top 10 on its own in uh, 1961. Okay, next, number 97, another song from 1961, a number one smash, Blue Moon by the Marcells. Um, and they didn't really have anything else. They did have another top 10 hit called Heartaches that followed up uh, Blue Moon, but Blue Moon's the main song. Some people who were young in the 70s may remember that it was used uh, it was a song that Sha Na recorded, and it was also on the uh, in the movie Grease, although I don't think it was on the soundtrack, but it was played in the movie. So I do remember that, anyway, from my youth. Okay, let's keep going. Number 96, Little Peggy March, and I Will Follow Him from 1963. Um, another artist who didn't do too much afterwards, but this was a big record for her. Um, I Will Follow Him, number 96 for the 60s. Number 95, we have Archie Bell and the Drells and Tighten Up. We're going to do the Tighten Up. <laughs> Pretty big hit in the spring of 1968. Uh, spending two weeks at number one and also hit number one on the R&B chart. They um, didn't do too much after that. They had I Can't Stop Dancing, which was also a top ten hit. And they had a pretty large disco song called Let's Groove uh, early on in 1976. But other than that, they didn't do a whole lot. So we see a pattern here. There's a lot of artists here that only had one hit or two hits on the bottom part of the chart. Here's another one hit wonder, Japanese star Q Sakamoto. It was, was the first pop number one hit ever uh, in, in Japanese. Uh, Sukiyaki was the song, and uh, it was number 94 of the 1960s. Next, number 93, we have The Kingsman with Louie Louie. Uh, did not hit number one. It only got stuck at number two for six weeks in a row, and it picked a bad time to become a big hit, very beginning of 1964. It did not get to number one because Bobby Vinton's uh, there, I've said it again, 
And then the Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand, was in the way of Louie Louie getting to number one. I still don't know what the hell they were singing, and neither do you. <laughs> but it's an all-time classic, and it came in at number 93 of the 1960s. Song number 92, Bobby Vinton, that I just mentioned with another song of his, Mr. Lonely, which hit number one at the very end of 1964. Uh, he was a very big star from throughout the first five years of the 60s, but the British invasion sure put a damper in his success along with many other big name artists who started out very strongly in the early 60s. Uh, we'll talk about several of them as we go through this countdown. Next, number 91, we have the Brothers Four with Greenfields. It was a time where folk pop was pretty popular in the early 60s as well, and there's a few songs that are considered folk pop couple of years before Bob Dylan and Peter Paul and Mary kind of changed the definition of it a little bit uh, so we have the brothers for uh, number 91 with Greenfields number 90 we have the righteous brothers with you're my soul and inspiration it was their second number one hit after you've lost that love and feeling the year before which uh, also is in our countdown and we will get to that um, that you're my soul and inspiration was probably the last big hit for them um, until they kind of had a bit, a bit of a comeback in the mid 70s they had a couple of hits including rock and roll heaven but a great song the righteous brothers at number 90 next number 89 on our list is the birds with turn 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 hit number one for three weeks in december of 1965 so according to our uh, chart uh, calculations it's charted very well for the year 1966 but came out very late in 65. But definitely a classic song, indeed, at number 89. Next, number 88, we have Bruce Channel and Hey Baby. Number one hit in 1963. Um, actually, 62, fall 62. Um, another one hit wonder. Bruce Channel never really had anything else after that. Next, number 87, we have Manford Man with Do Wah Diddy Diddy, a big number one hit in 1964. Of course, um, they would have a couple other hits. Uh, Sha La La was a hit in 65, and they had the Mighty Quinn in 1968, and then they kind of drifted apart and got back together again in the mid-70s as Man for Man's Earth Band. And, of course, they hit number one with it, Bruce Springsteen's Blinded by the Light and also hit the top 40 with, uh, um, what is it, um, do, do, do Something in the Night. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, so that was the pretty much the run with Man for Man, but this was their big classic hit, indeed, of course, do wah diddy diddy All right, next, number 86, we have Steve Lawrence with Go Away Little Girl from 1962, 61 or 2. Um, of course, it was remade again 10 years later by Donny Osmond and turned, hit number one again. It's one of the few songs ever to be recorded twice and hit number one for two different artists. Uh, Steve Lawrence at number 86. Next, we have The Tokens with The Lion Sleeps Tonight, number 1962, number one hit for them. Uh, of course, it was re-recorded a couple of times. It was also a hit for Robert John in 1972, um, and uh, it's been recorded many different times, as a, even as a Wimbleway as a title, but also The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Okay, next, number 84, we have Gene Chandler with Duke of Earl. Uh, very, very familiar song. Hit number one for one week. Uh, Gene Chandler didn't do a whole lot after that. He had a couple other little hits. Um, and he kind of faded out, but he did get to about 1970 or so. And I think he had one disco hit called Get Down. It was about in 78 or 79. Uh, anyway, next, we have number 83. It's the Beach Boys, I Get Around. In summer of 64, that hit number one. And it had... Um, uh, Don't Worry Baby is the B-side, a uh, pretty big B-side. Beach Boys had didn't waste the B-sides. They were great classic songs in a lot of cases. Uh, and that hit, that charted on their own. But there they are at 83, we gotta get around. Number 82, we have The Tornadoes with Telstar. Uh, very weird sounding <laughs> song, indeed, for the early 60s. But number 82 on the list. Number 81, we have The King, Elvis Presley, with Return to Sender. Song spent five weeks at number two. 
on the charts in 1962. Uh, he was still going strong in the early 60s. Um, and uh, he has a few more songs in the top 100 as we go through them. Number 80, we have The Highwaymen with Michael. Uh, Michael Rowe, Bodeshaw. Hallelujah, yeah. If you don't, if maybe Michael doesn't enjoy your memory. Um, the 1961 hit and hit number one, The Highwaymen. Another part of that kind of folk, early folk rock. Uh, next, number 79, we have Roy Orbison and the Candyman with Oh Pretty Woman from 1964. That was the biggest hit that Roy Orbison ever had. He did have a couple of number twos. Um, well, actually, he uh, I take that back. He actually had, a, he had another number one, Running Scared. Running Scared was his other number one. Only alone we hit number two. Uh, so that's uh, Roy Orbison at number 79. Next, seven, number 78, another hit for the Shirelles, Soldier Boy, 1962. That hit number one. Pretty much a follow up to Will You Love Me Tomorrow. Um, so that was number 78. The Angels were number 77 with My Boyfriend's Back from 1963. Uh, that was a pretty big record. And they also had a couple other smaller hits like Till. And a couple of little records. Um, so there you are, number 77. Next, number 76. The third number one hit in a row for the Supremes. After Where Did Our Love Go and Baby Love. Which we'll hear both of them coming up. But Come See About Me hit the charts at the very end of 1964. It's kind of battling back and forth with I Feel Fine by the Beatles. For number one in December 64, January 65. Uh, so that's that. Supremes were red, red hot at this point in time ended up with 12 number one hits so next we have Bobby Vinton at number 75 with Blue Velvet which hit number one in 1962 he was like I said another artist that was red hot in the early 60s but faded out as soon as the British invasion and Motown kicked into gear in 1964 next number 74 as speaking of the British invasion the one female star out of the, the British invasion Petula Clark her first number one was Downtown, early in 1965. She would hit number one again the next year with My Love and have a couple of other big top five hits in that range straight through to 1967 or 8. Um, so that's number 74 for Petula Clark. Number 73 is The Supremes again with Where Did Our Love Go? That was their first number one hit in the summertime of 64. Um, they would have a run of five number ones uh, 64 into 65 next number 72 we have Connie Francis and everybody's somebody's fool from 1960 first of two number ones that she would have that year another artist that was a superstar from 58 till about 63 but then got pushed aside by 64 next number 71 Shelley Fabres with Johnny Angel big number one record in 1961 for Shelley Fabres, who would later go on to do some TV work and some commercials, TV commercials in the 70s and 80s. Next, number 70, The Supremes again with Baby Love, the second number one in a row. This one would spend four weeks at the top and would explode up the charts to number one and then quickly go back down, which was usually what a lot of songs did in that time period. Next, number 69, Chubby Checker and Pony Time. Yes, he wasn't just the twist, but yes, all of his hits were dance-related songs, songs about dances. It was Pony Time, 1961, when he hit number one with uh, Pony Time. Number 68, we have Paul and Paula with Hey Paula. No, their names were not Paul and Paula, <laughs> but the song was Hey Paula. So they went along with that, and they, put, they matched the name of the act with the song thinking that they uh, would not have any other hits. They figured they'd just make it a big, as, as big a splash as they could. Um, they ended up having, I think, two or three smaller hits afterwards. So they weren't a complete novelty, but somewhat. <laughs> All right, next. Number 67, Lawrence Welk and his orchestra with Calcutta, hit number one in 1960. And uh, at, back in around 1960, you'll notice the chart had a lot 6061 had a lot of instrumental hits. Seemed to be a big thing. Orchestras were still pretty popular at the time. Next, 
Number 66, we have Floyd Kramer and Last Date, also from 1960, a number two hit. Um, a guy that had a few other hits. He was very much involved with instrumental music and very big band sounding music. He wasn't really pop, you know. Although for that time period, he, he was. Next, number 65, we have The Drifters with Save the Last Dance for Me. Drifters would be a very popular group. Late 50s into early 60s. Had several pop and R&B hits. Next, number 64, we have The Righteous Brothers again with You've Lost That Love and Feeling. This would be their biggest hit. It would spend three weeks at number one early in 1965 and be the number three song of the year of 65. Um, and uh, it's a song that's considered a classic, one of the most played songs in radio history. And uh, was a pretty big remake uh, for Daryl Hall and John Oates in 1980 into 81. Okay, so next, number 63, we have Bobby Vinton in there. I've said it again. Big hit early in 1964. It is the last number one hit before the Beatles took over the charts <laughs> early in 64. And uh, but as you can see, Bobby Vinton was pretty big in that time period. He already had three songs in our top 100. Next, number 62, The Four Seasons and Sherry. Their very first big hit record spent five weeks at number one in 1962. It was one of the biggest hits of the year. Started him in a, on them on a big run of hits that would take them pretty much through the whole 60s. Next, number 61, The Four Tops. I Can't Help Myself, Sugar Pie, Honey Bunch. One of two number ones for The Four Tops in the 1960s. Uh, the other one, of course, was Reach Out, I'll Be There. Uh, this hit number one in the summer of 65. 65, by a lot, in a lot of people's standards, is considered probably the greatest or the best collection of big hit records for any year. If you look at the list of 1965 hits, and I will, because I will be doing yearly countdowns as well, you'll see 65 is really an amazing year. All right. So next, number 60, we have Dion with Run Around Sue. Uh, big number one in 1961. He had just started recording on his own. He was part, of course, Dion and the Belmonts for a few years. But in 61, he kind of started recording without the Belmonts. More of a solo act. And his success got even better. Uh, spearheaded by this song, Run Around Sue. Next, number 59, we have Mark Dinning and Teen Angel. This would basically be his only memorable big hit record. Uh, and this would go to number one in 1960. Number 58, also from 1960, it is Marty Robbins and El Paso, a song that uh, is considered an all-time classic on the country charts. But on pop was a big, big hit as well in 1960. Next, number 57, we have Herb Albert. And this guy's in love with you. The only song that he ever really sang on and uh, ended up being a big, big hit, spending four weeks at number one in the summer of 68. Next, number 56, we have Nancy and Frank Sinatra and Something Stupid. Big number one hit in 1967 would be the biggest hit ever for Nancy Sinatra. Bigger than the Eats Boots are made for walking. And Frank Sinatra just continuing his run. Kind of odd to have a father and daughter duet song, but uh, nothing wrong with it. <laughs> it was, ended up being a really good song and a big hit. All right. Next, number 55, we have The Turtles and Happy Together, also from 1967. The biggest hit for The Turtles among, uh, among several that they had from 65 through 69. Very popular act. For, for that time period, kind of disappeared by the beginning of the 70s. But uh, that was a big one, happy together. Next, we have number 54, The Box Tops and The Letter. That's also from 1967. That spent four weeks at number one. Uh, they also hit with a couple more hits. They had Cry Like a Baby early in 68. Uh, they had a top 20 hit, Sold Deep, in 69, and then kind of disappeared. Um, one thing about the, about the 60s, a lot of these acts, that either were super-duper stars with... With uh, huge Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame type careers, or they basically were big for a year or two and, and disappeared. It seemed to be the case for a lot of these acts. Here's one of those Hall of Fame acts. Now at number 53, it's The Temptations. 
I Can't Get Next to You, one of the bigger hits of 1969. Um, in the middle of a huge run of hits. Uh, they sure had tremendous songwriters behind them and Barry Gordy. Very hard to go wrong with the team that acts like the Temptations act, certainly. All right, number 52, we have the Chiffons and He's So Fine. Number one hit from 1963. Of course, got more notoriety when George Harrison's My Sweet Lord sounded quite a bit like He's So Fine. <laughs> and George Harrison had to end up ponying up some cash <laughs> in, in court <laughs> based on that song. It can happen. I guess you can subconsciously come up with a melody and not even think about, oh, you know, there's the song is almost exactly like it. You know, it can happen. All right, anyway, number 51 on the list, we have Tommy Rowe and Dizzy. Big number one hit from 1969 would be his biggest hit. Um, oh no, I think that was Liberty Records, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, now we're at number 50. We're halfway through the list. Ferrante and Teicher with an instrumental Exodus, the theme from Exodus, which was a big number two hit in 1960. It was number 50 for the decade of the 60s. Next, number 49, we have The Doors and Light My Fire. What else? What can be said about Light My Fire? It hasn't been said already. Biggest hit of The Doors' career. Really helped them explode onto the pop music scene in the summer of 67. And an all-time classic, number 49. Next, number 48, we have The Singing Nun with Dominique. <laughs> Still laugh about that song. How did that spend a month at number one? I don't... All right. Next, number 47, we have the Young Rascals and Groovin', one of the biggest hits of the spring of 67, spending four weeks at number one, one of their biggest hits. They did have one bigger hit, which we'll get to soon. Next, number 46, we have The Association and Windy, a big record from the summer of 67. Uh, the Association had a pretty good run of about four or five big hits over a two-year period to one of those acts that were red hot for two years and then faded out so that's the association number 46 number 45 we have connie francis and my heart has a mind of its own from 1960 written by harold greenfield howard greenfield uh, another example connie francis at a certain point in time was red red hot why the rock and roll hall has not even given her a shot after all these years, I'll never understand. Anyway, next, back to the one-hit wonders. At number 44, we have Staff Sergeant Barry Sadler with The Ballad of the Green Berets. It was a huge record early in 1966, spending five weeks at number one and was ranked the number one single of the year. Um, Vietnam starting up at that time. I think of something like this, you know, paying tribute to, uh, to a military um, is not a terrible thing at that time period. Anyway, next, number 43, we have Bobby Gentry, an ode to Billy Joel. Fall of 1967, a big, big record. Battling it out with the letter uh, by the box tops. Those two songs dominated the chart for a good two-month period. Next, number 42, we have Del Shannon and Runaway. Big record from 1961. Um, not someone that had many... Uh, hits afterwards, uh, I can think of Hats Off to Larry, and there was another hit called Keep Searching in 1964, another one of the victims of the British invasion in Motown. Next, number 41, we have Mr. Acker Bilk, <laughs> Stranger on the Shore, one of those odd little records from the very early 60s that did not sound much like anything that came after a few, within a few years, that's for certain. Next, number 40, Chubby Checker and Limbo Rock, another one of those songs about dances. <laughs> that was his thing. That was his forte. If you sang a song about a dance, you were not going to beat Chubby. That's <laughs> for sure. That hit number two, by the way. But it spent a long time in the charts, like 23 weeks, which was a very long time for that time period. Next, number 39, we have The Rolling Stones and I Can't Get No Satisfaction. The number one single of 1965, spending four weeks at the top. Um, and it was a big, big record. In terms of longevity on the charts, it wasn't on the charts it's very long. kind of shot up the charts very quickly, so it didn't gather a lot of points. That's why it's number 39 on the list. You would think 
a number one song of the year would would rate higher or rank higher on this countdown but anyway next we have number 38 we have the new vaudeville band and winchester cathedral a surprisingly big hit at the end of 1966 for this band who never really had another hit number 37 we have the beatles with billy preston and get back from 1969 spent five weeks at number one and uh Odd to have someone else credited on a Beatles song, but Billy Preston really did contribute in a big way in the last year or two of that band. Next, number 36, we have the Monkees and Daydream Believer. Big number one at the end of 1967. 67 was the Monkees year between I'm a Believer, a little bit me, and a little bit of you, and uh, Daydream Believer. Those were three huge hit records, and it was their time for sure. Number 35, we have Tommy James and the Shondells with Crimson and Clover. The original version, <laughs> early in 1969, was big number one for them. Tommy James was very popular. 69 seemed to be one of his best years, as he also hit with Sweet Cherry Wine and uh, Crystal Blue, Persuasion, and Ball of Fire hit the top 20 at the end of the year. It was a big year for them. Yes, so Joan Jett didn't, didn't write that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Next, number 34, we have Johnny Preston and Running Bear from 1960, a big number one early in the decade. Number 33, Sly and the Family Stone and Everyday People, another big one from 1969, spending four weeks at the top. In fact, it is a song that knocked Crimson Clover out of number one. Number 32, Zager and Evans in the year 2525, summertime 1969, Song close to my heart. It was number one the week I was born. <laughs> no, no, I really, I was born in 69. I, I know I don't look it. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, Bazinga and Evans are the classic one-hit wonder. They never hit the top 40 again after the success of this song. Next, number 31, Elvis Presley and Stuck on You. Another number one record. He uh, spent a year... In the military, a year and a half, so he recorded a little bit less than before. Uh, in 6, 1960, he got back out. He got out of the military and got back recording full-time again. And he was hot. He had this song, and he also had uh, It's Now or Never, which is coming up. And also, oh, Are You Lonesome Tonight, actually. That's right. All three of those were recorded in 1960. So uh, he, uh, he made his presence felt. Beginning of the decade, certain. Okay, number 30 is next. It's the Beatles and She Loves You. Right on top of uh, I Want to Hold Your Hand, She Loves You was released and hit number one just after uh, I Want to Hold Your Hand started them on the biggest hot streak that any uh, probably any recording act has ever had, for certain. Okay, next, number 29, we have Diana Ross and the Supremes with Love Child. A huge record that was number one right after Hey Jude by the Beatles. Uh, definitely a song with a social commentary at a, at a time where that type of music was very, very popular. And that was happened to be uh, the Supremes' 11th of 12 number one hits. Next, number 28, we have Bert Camfort and his orchestra at Wonderland by Night. One of those instrumental songs that were very popular at the beginning of the 60s. It's the number four song of the year, 1961. Number 27, we have The Rascals and People Got to Be Free. This would end up being the biggest hit that The Rascals would ever have, spending five weeks at number one, and it was ranked the number five single of 1968. Number 26 is Bobby Vinton and Roses of Red, My Love. One of the biggest hits of 1962. As I have been stating earlier, uh, he was had a big, big run first half of the 60s. This is a fourth song by him in this countdown. Next, number 25, Joey D and the Starlighters, Peppermint Twist. Uh, one of those songs that was released at the very end of the year, 1961, kind of cut into its chart success. So for 61, it was the number 37 song of the year, but it was the number 4 song of the year in 62. So, uh... A big record, nonetheless, and two members of the Rascals were in the backing band for Joey Dean and Starlighters. Next, number 24, we have Bobby Goldsboro and Honey. 
This was his one huge record in the middle of a halfway decent career. Um, but in 68, this was a big one, spending five weeks at number one. It was the number four song of 1968. Next, at number 23, we have the Everly Brothers and Kathy's Clown. This would be their biggest record, spending five weeks at number one in 1960. And would be the number five song of 1960. Now we're at number 22. It's Lulu and To Sir With Love. One of those artists that would have one huge hit and not have much else to speak of. But this was huge in 1967. It was the second biggest hit of the year. Number 21, we have Jim Reeves and He'll Have to Go. This is one of the biggest country hits of all time. And on the pop chart, it did pretty darn well. Peaking at number two and spending 23 weeks on the charts, which was a long time in 1960. It was the number four song of the year that year. Number 20, Jimmy Dean and Big Bad John. Big number one for five weeks, end of 19, or beginning of 1961. Um, another one of those songs that was divided up. It came out at the very end of 60, so it's not ranking very high for 1960 or 61, but it was a big hit. Next at number 19, we have Otis Redding and Sitting on the Dock at a Bay. Unfortunately, this was a posthumous number one hit for Otis Redding as he had died in a plane crash in December of 67. And this would go on to spend four weeks at number one and was a number three hit of 1968. Next at number 18, we have the Rolling Stones and Honky Tonk Women, one of their biggest hits, spending four weeks at number one in 1969. Sadly, it was released just after the death of uh, their guitarist, what the hell is it, Brian Jones. <laughs> um, story is that he drowned in a, in a pool. Um, kind of uh, put a damper on things for certain for the Stones. But this was the next single release after his death. And maybe it spurred the song to be even more popular than what it would have been anyway. But it was a big one in 69. All right, my friends, number 17, we're getting near the top now. Number 17, Jimmy Gilmer and the Fireballs with Sugar Shack. It was the number one song of 1963, spending five weeks at number one. Um, didn't really do too much after that. Had a couple of minor hits. And then in 68, they had a top 10 hit called Bottle of Wine. They were just the Fireballs then. Jimmy Gilmer wasn't putting his name out in front. It was just... They just shortened the name to the Fireballs. All right. Number 16, we have The Four Seasons and Big Girls Don't Cry. So that spent five weeks at number one at the very end of 1962. Uh, the second huge hit in a row out of the gate for them. They Walk Like a Man would be their third straight number one early in 63. Number 15, we have Louis Armstrong and Hello, Dolly. A classic tune. Number two song of 1964, in between all those Beatles songs, um, had a huge run in the top ten, and uh, gained a lot of points. It only spent one week at number one, but it spent so long in the top of the charts that it ranked number 15 for the decade. Number 14, we have Paul Moriart and his orchestra and Love is Blue, big record in 1968. That spent five weeks at number one, it was number two for the year. Uh, one of the biggest instrumental hits of all time. The biggest one is coming up in our countdown, by the way. Number 13, we have Brenda Lee, and I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, she did something besides rocking around a Christmas tree. <laughs> she did a lot besides that song. And I'm sorry was probably it was her biggest hit. It still ranks as her biggest hit. It's the third biggest hit of 1960. Uh, another song that spent a long time on the charts for that time period. Next, number 12, we have Ray Charles and I Can't Stop Loving You. This is the second biggest hit of 62. Uh, and Ray, Ray, Ray Charles, the biggest hit he ever had. He won a Grammy. He won several Grammys in 1963. Next, number 11, Elvis Presley and It's Now or Never. This is one of the songs I mentioned when he came back out of the, out of the Army in 1960. He recorded several really big hit records. It's Now or Never. Of course, it takes the... Uh, now, melody of O Solo Mio. <laughs> but he wasn't sued because it was more than 72 years before. <laughs> a, little, a little more than 72 years earlier than uh, 1960. All right. Speaking of which, he had two in a row. 
as I mentioned, two in a row, 1960. That was uh, Are You Lonesome Tonight? It was number 10 for the decade of the 60s. Uh, and it was the number two song of 1961. Next, number nine, The Archies and Sugar Sugar, New York group led by uh, Ron Dante. Uh, that He was also the Cufflinks, by the way, for Tracy. So he actually had Sugar Sugar and Tracy both on the charts at the same time. But Sugar Sugar obviously was the bigger hit going with number one for four weeks. It was the number three hit of 1969. Next, we have number eight. It's Marvin Gaye, and I heard it through the grapevine. A song that was a hit a year before for Gladys Knight and the Pips. But that hit number two on the charts. But this song hit number one for seven weeks. And would be ranked the number two single of 1969. Number seven is a fifth dimension in Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine In. The biggest hit of 1969, uh, spending uh, six weeks at number one and being a huge blockbuster Grammy winner as well. Next, at number six, we have The Monkees and I'm a Believer. The Monkees' biggest hit, spending seven weeks at number one, would be the number one hit of the year 1967, the year of The Monkees. Next, number five, The Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand, the song that really started it off here in the USA, as they would spend seven weeks at number one and be the number one hit of 1964 uh, with that song. So, Number four on the list, Bobby Lewis and Tossin' and Turnin', the number one hit of 1961. Uh, the... Uh, had a couple of minor hits after that. One track mine was the follow-up hit that hit the top ten. But he kind of faded out within a couple of years. All right. Now, we're up to number three. Percy Faith and his orchestra, the theme from A Summer Place. The number one hit of 1960. It's been a total of nine weeks at number one. And it is the biggest instrumental hit of all time. It won a bunch of Grammys and was ranked number three for the decade. So here we are, the top two. The top two. So you're guessing which one it is? I think there's two obvious choices. <laughs> the biggest hit by the biggest band in history. And the biggest dance craze hit there's ever been. Number two is The Beatles, Hey Jude. The number one song of 1968. Spent nine weeks at number one. B-side was Revolution, which was a hit in its own right, getting as high as number 12. Uh, the Beatles' Hey Jude was a tremendous record and uh, the biggest hit of the 60s that only had one chart run. <laughs> so, of course, here we are, number one song of the 60s, Shelby Checker and The Twist. The only song ever to hit number one and then start another second chart run and hit number one again which they did. Shelby hit number one first time in 1960 and was ranked the uh, number six song of 1960. And then the re-release in 1962 shot all the way to number one again. And this time ended up being the number one single of 1962. Spent a total of 39 weeks on the Hot 100, which at the time was a record that would stay a record until uh, I Go Crazy by Paul Davis in 1978. Uh, but for the 60s, Chubby Checker has the crown with the twist. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this countdown. Um, about a week or so, I think I'm going to do one of a decade each week. So next week I will do the top 100 of the 70s, which may be more enjoyable for people in our age group. Uh, but there we are. I hope you enjoyed this. Please share. Please subscribe. Please like. And please don't be too mean with the comments, okay? Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, peace and love.